Hello, greetings and welcome. This is Alchemy, the first show of 2017 and it's great to have your company. Wherever you might be, wherever you're listening from, you're all equally welcome. Uh, don't be shy as well. We have an online community on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us there and say hello to us. Of course, we exist thanks to your very kind donations. So thank you to everybody who does so via our website. We're completely non-profit and intend to stay that way. So on to the show. Alchemy, alchemy. This episode, we see the return of David Icke. David has been with me on several occasions in the past, and we always have a most interesting and enlightening discussion, and I'm sure this will be no exception. So, David, how are you? You're welcome back to Alchemy. I'm very good, John. In fact, I don't think I've ever been better. Um, the uh, the interest in um, the, the work that I do and the information and the ongoing world tour, which will be um, in Ireland shortly, um, as, as I've never known anything like it. And, uh, you know, I've been... Um, doing this now for 27 years and it's um it's reaching a point now where you can see um you can see people in very significant numbers uh looking at the world in a different way uh, sometimes it's in a most uh you know if you like five cents level uh uh we're sick of the european union we're getting out uh but but more and more people are, are opening themselves to really deep levels of of um concepts and understanding which um which they would have waved aside with a laugh um, not so long ago well that's very interesting and you've kind of touched on brexit there which i would like to talk about because 2016 saw a lot of changes i mean brexit being won it was kind of an anti-establishment vote you look at donald trump being elected against all the mainstream odds if you're that way inclined uh, I think most people expected Hillary Clinton and the mainstream media certainly pushed for Clinton to be elected. So in terms of that, do you think it's a genuine shift or do you think it could be the case that we've been sold a pup in a sense and that Trump maybe isn't as genuine as he seems to be in terms of being anti-establishment? Um, I mean, I've been looking at some of his uh, cabinet appointments with interest there. And then with Brexit as well, could it be that this is actually part of a, a greater plan or a greater scheme? Or do you think it's something organic? I'm very interested in your views on this. Well, I, I think um, it's both in, in this sense. Um, people um, are in ever greater numbers um, getting sick and tired of just following along like the one in front. Vast numbers of people still do that, of course. But but there are um, significant numbers who, who were like that before, who are now saying, we're not having this anymore. We're not being dictated to, and we're not being told what to think and what to do. And we're not having our lives uh, um, uh, in, in fine detail, uh, more and more, um, imposed upon. And, and when people have had the opportunity to um, express that, and of course, it's very difficult to do that in a political election in, for, for instance, Britain, because you're being offered, and, and, and history has shown that to be the case, very blatantly masks on the same face. In other words, um, take the rhetoric away, and there's not a cigarette paper between any of them, really, in terms of their basic thrust and the way they see the world and economics and, and all the rest of it. But with Brexit, given the fact that it was a referendum with with two choices, you actually could um, uh, give your choice without having to go through a political party where it would never be seen again, mm. uh, 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 probably, because, of course, what they tell you uh, they're going to do to get into power uh, is rarely what they do when they get into power. But this referendum overrode that. And I think was a, uh, a, a, a and I think it's the reason why it was shocking to the establishment and took them aback is that um, elections do not give you the opportunity to do that um, in Britain and most other countries because of what I'm talking about. But this referendum did, and that's what shocked them, because the people had the opportunity to express how they felt, which is which is they're sick of uh, dark suit bureaucrats in Brussels imposing um, um, themselves in more and more fine detail upon um, the lives of everyone else. Mm. In terms of Trump, I think that was the same. The difference, I think, though, is that uh, the reason so many voted for Trump against all the odds was not because of what Trump is. Uh, Trump, Trump is not going to drain the swamp. He's standing in it. 
um, that what what got him the support was the perception that he was an anti-establishment, the perception that he was for the, um, if you like, the common man, as, as people wrongly call themselves. Mm. Um, uh, uh, that's, that, that was um, the, if you like, the barometer of where uh, people were at in terms of why they voted uh, for him. But um, as I said, on the very day that he was elected, they're all going to be very disappointed because he's not what he seemed to be. But in terms of, um, like I say, a barometer on the public mood, um, the fact that they voted for someone they thought was outside the establishment was very much in line with with the the, the mentality and the motivations behind Brexit. But of course, as you rightly say, um, since that day he was elected, um, the uh, swamp drainer has just um, got the hose pipe out and started filling it. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the most significant thing, and I think most people are missing this, when they're getting pulled into other things. The most Im important um, aspect of Trump is that he is 100% um, uh, owned um, by Israel, mm. uh, owned in his mind as well as possibly, uh, probably literally. Uh, because if you look at his appointments, he has handed the American economy to um to Zionists, he's handed it to um, Steve Mnuchin as Treasury Secretary, Goldman Sachs longtime partner. He's handed it to Gary Cohn, president of Goldman Sachs, who is made director of his National Economic Council. Uh, the Federal Reserve uh, chief, which is obviously massively influential in, in um, the American economy, is Janet Yellen, who's a, a, a Zionist. And her um, vice chairman is Stanley Fisher, who is the former governor of the Bank of Israel. Um, and then you look at um, his um, ambassador to Israel, a right-wing zealot called David Friedman, the really um, right out there, so far right he's, he meets himself coming back. Jason uh, Greenblatt, he's, he's made his international negotiator, another extreme right-wing Zionist, and international negotiations in, in, in all areas of trade, etc., but also in negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. So, um, you know, whether Trump won or whether uh, Clinton won, was basically irrelevant to the long term picture, but but there there are differences that will that will um, will will make the detail different. For instance, uh, Trump um, is wanting to um, get better relations with Russia, whereas Clinton, would, without question, in my mind, would have would have taken us into war with Russia. Uh, that's what where it was all building up. Um, and you've got Donald Trump, if he sticks with it, because I call him President Two Mouths. He says one thing and then says another and then does a third. Yeah. Um, but but if he sticks with it, then um, it, it's going to be more difficult for the global warming hoax to be played out with the speed uh, 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 that, that they want it uh, to be, because the global warming hoax is there to justify a complete transformation of human society. Um, so they would be good things if they came about. But on the other hand, um, I think another key word in the Trump um, presidency is um, is Iran. Um, he's made um, statements about um, Iran that are um, not complimentary. Yeah. Uh, he's put in uh, to the um, Pentagon as defense secretary this this guy with the extraordinary nickname Mad Dog. Mad Dog Mattis, who's who's publicly said how much he enjoys killing people, what fun it is. He is vehemently anti-Iran. He's got this guy, Michael Flynn, another military man as national security advisor, who is vehemently anti-Iran. And then you've got Israel and um, Netanyahu, a close friend of Trump, who is vehemently anti-Iran and, and, and wants uh, a, a strike on Iran uh, in, in truth. Because um, if you remember, um, in September 2000, when the Zionist um, dominated um, organization project for the New American Century mm. um, laid out, in effect, uh, what it wanted the incoming Bush administration to do, it may, uh, and then many of its members became the Bush administration, people like Cheney and Rumsfeld and Wolfowitz and so on, um, 
it laid out a series of countries in which it wanted regime change. Yeah. And, and, and of course, they've been ticked off. Um, Iraq, um, Libya, uh, Syria, well, that's gone pear-shaped for them at the moment, thank goodness. Um, but another, the major one on the list, or a major one on the list, was Iran. And um, this is why they were all kicking off over this um, nuclear agreement with Iran, because that's not the idea to um, have good relations with Iran. So so when you, you look at that from the Trump point of view, I think that's going to be um, uh, a key word, Iran, uh, uh, as well as Israel. And of course, we've already seen uh, the other word, which is China. I mean, this guy's not even in office and he's kicked off a, a, a row with China. And and when, when you see where it came from, which was a, a phone call conversation he had with the leader of Taiwan, and I'm not taking sides over this Taiwan-China conflict, what I am saying is the idea that that, were, that phone call was an accident and just, quote, happened is ludicrous. It was done on purpose, yeah. uh, 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 calculated uh, on purpose to, 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 to trigger what happened, which was this um, this rift with China, and he's not even in office yet. So, so it, you know, bringing the question around um, to a, a kind of summary, I think Brexit was uh, um, a an expression of how uh, so many people now feel about the establishment and centralized imposition. And I think Trump was the same, except um, they, they miscalculated what Trump is. He's not anti-establishment. He's just another classic guy who sat down with his advisors and worked out what his natural constituency of support was and what he had to tell that constituency of support to get it to 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 vote for him. And, and, and that's what happened. And, and now, of course, before he's even close to going in, although it's getting closer now, he's um, he's done exactly the opposite with his appointments that he said he was going to do almost exactly the opposite, not in every case. There are really two sides to every coin, aren't there, when we're talking about the so-called global elite or the powers that shouldn't be? Yeah, there are. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, th th there is emphasis in, in detail with different people, but you've got to look at the main thrust. I mean, you know, don't let anyone be surprised um, that Trump is uh, going back on um, what he said he stood for, because we have a fantastic example with Barack Obama. Yeah, exactly. No, no one could have claimed that he was going to be different, that he was about change more than him. I mean, it, it, it was repetitive to the point of, of, of boredom. Um, but he came in and did exactly what um, he said he wouldn't do. Now, the, this is another point I think is very important because in the end, it's all a psychological game. It's all psychology. It's all coming from perception. The whole thing's perception. At incredibly deep levels that are usually not discussed. Um, so if you look at what happened with, um, with Barack Obama, I, I was in America talking in the run up to it. And I remember speaking in Los Angeles one evening at a, a, a place called the Million Dollar Theater. Um, in downtown Los Angeles. And um, the, the big um, progressive, not least in California, uh, what are called progressives, um, uh, euphoria was at its peak because this man Obama was going to come in and, uh, and, and he was going to change everything. And I, uh, as part of this presentation this night, I said the opposite. I said he's not. He's just another mask on the same face, and um, he's just telling you what you want to hear, so that he can get in, and then it'll be it will be business as usual. And you know, the, you could have heard a pin drop, um, to, to say the least, because it, it wasn't what it, pe most people there wanted to hear. Mm. But it was obvious that's what he was, because in the end, I mean, just look at this. Just like the Clintons. Donald Trump uh, doesn't have skeletons in the cupboard. He has whole cemeteries, right? Uh, if they wanted to destroy him, they could have destroyed him. They didn't destroy him. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the Republican Party could have destroyed him. They didn't destroy him. So, so I, I don't buy this, uh, any of this outsider um, stuff, not, not least after seeing his, um, his um, appointments. But what happened with Obama is although he came in and and did not stand for what he said he would stand for that took um uh, america into uh, catastrophic um uh, attacks on uh, libya 
uh, the, 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 the consequences of which have been horrific for, for, for Libyans and, and the same in, in Syria. Um, where was the anti-war movement that had gathered so much pace during the Boyd Bush administration? Nowhere. Because where did the anti-war movement come from? Basically what from an area uh, of, 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 of perception and, and belief that people call progressives. The very um, uh, groups that supported Obama and in investing in Obama, um, that um, that a belief that he was uh, going to do what he said uh, and was what he claimed to be, and also investing their almost reputation in re- in, in 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 that that's what he was going to be. Um, it meant that he got this free ride in places like Libya and Syria that boy George Bush would never have got. And, 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 and it's gone on. He's going out of office now, basically unchallenged by that constituency um, that would have challenged uh, uh, Bush had um, he done the same. Now, um, when I look at Donald Trump now, John, I see the same process. Mm. You know, a significant part of the alternative media, um, well, it calls itself alternative in the United States, um, has got behind Trump. Um, and, and pushed and pushed and pushed um, and promoted him. Now, for me, uh, you know, I, I've been in this arena for a very long time. And for me, um, in fact, there was no arena when I started out. Um, uh, the alternative media is not there to take political sides. It's there to question everything. And yeah. it's there to point out that it's the system and how it works and what is behind it in the shadows that is the, that that is driving um, world events and the direction of the world. Once you start um, jumping on one political side, first of all, you're accepting that polit- politics makes any fundamental difference, which it doesn't. It's there to stop any fundamental difference being being uh, being made. Um, but you. Um, you you lose your perspective. Suddenly, instead of uh, um, um, exposing um, what um, someone has done, like, for instance, hey, Mr. Trump, I thought you said you were going to drain the swamp. What about your economic team? What about this? What about that? No, there's, there's no discernment going on mm. among that part of the alternative media anymore. They're mirroring, uh, John, what the progressives did with Obama. And, and therefore, Trump can do no wrong. Even when he when he does blatantly opposite things to what he said, they find an excuse for him. And, and what I've found also is this. Since Trump has started coming out um, vehemently supporting um, Israel and very, very clearly making statements about moving, moving the embassy, American embassy to Jerusalem, which, of course, is a tremendously um, uh, 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 relevant and um, and um, symbolic uh, t- with Palestinians. Uh, when they've seen this, they've started coming out and and supporting Israel in in in, in, in an unquestioning way. Um, it, it's 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 extraordinary. We're seeing the right version of what people call the left. With Obama, when he came in, and if we, the alternative media, are going to be alternative, we have to be beyond the political uh, puppet show. We have to expose it for what it is, a manipulated irrelevance. But I think, you know, the, the, the thing is, if, if you can only see um, the five cents world, that's all you can perceive as uh, real as existing, then all your answers to your perceived five sense problems must come from the five sense realm. Mm. And if you won't go deep into the nature of consciousness, the deep into the nature of perception uh, manipulation, then, you know, if, if, if your only tool is a hammer, um, every problem looks like a nail. And what happens in the end when you're looking for answers and solutions to what you perceive to be five cents problems is five cents um, solutions. So you talk about stockpiling weapons to fight the enemy or you get pulled back into the um, uh, 
political system on the basis of this guy's different to the others. That's what happened with Obama. That's what's happened with with, with Trump. And, and, you know, there is, I think, a, a coming and I think it's already happening. There is a reevaluation among um, what constitutes um, alternative media. And Trump supporting Trump apologists are not the alternative media. They are at best mainstream light. Uh, and and uh, what we are looking at now with this great fake news hoax, which came out of nowhere, always watch when something comes out of nowhere and suddenly everywhere, is is they're using um, basically what the mainstream media do, which is fake stories. Uh, but but we need to be honest. There are parts of the alternative media that do the same. The clickbait alternative media that's not alternative at all. It's just parasitical on those that are genuine. Um, that they are using that to target the genuine um, alternative media, uh, which which they're terrified of, that which has um, integrity, that, that which is looking for facts, that's looking for what's really going on rather than um, uh, taking sides in the political spectrum. And it's very interesting because I have seen exactly what you're talking about happened before my eyes with regard to a lot of well-established mainstream outlets and portals who, I mean, I, w- I would have begun my journey with, for example, and they say the whole Trump thing seems to have completely obliterated so much of the paradigm-shattering work that had been done over previous years with this fallback into, it's almost like falling through this this back through a glass ceiling into the political paradigm again or a more mainstream way of thinking which if that's a deliberate plan on the part of the mainstream to discredit the alternative it's worked quite well in certain cases and in some quite high profile cases yeah um uh, and, and and you're right that's what's gonna happening because you see um you 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 look at trump's basic premise and that is pro-israel and in effect anti-muslim muslims are the problem um, and suddenly, uh, for instance, when you have a terrorist attack in Europe, what and, and some of us still do. But but what this part of the alternative media that's got Trumpitis uh, has done um, is or would have done is to dissect the official story and um, show that actually it's not credible what is claimed to have happened. What happens now is there's a, a terrorist attack in Europe and this part of the uh, alternative media, hey, see, it's the Muslims and all that stuff. Yeah. It's extraordinary. There is no um, peripheral vision. There's no um, shades of grey. It's all black and white. And this black and white mirrors what Donald Trump says and stands for. It's so blatant. You're right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the next year brings. But in terms of the travelling you've been doing over the last year, well, longer at this stage, but particularly over the last year, you've been visiting so many different and seemingly disparate countries. I know interpreters are being used in certain countries because, of course, yeah. you're giving the talks in English. How have they been received? And have you noticed any kind of difference from region to region? Or does there seem to be a, an almost global acceptance or not the case. I mean, maybe there isn't an acceptance of what you're saying, but I would imagine there is a certain degree of acceptance because once those dots are joined, and I've seen it firsthand when you give your talks over the course of 10 hours, there are so many dots joined that previously mightn't have been even on the radar of a lot of the audience. So what has the reception to that been and what are the differences between different regions, I guess, is what I'm asking you. First of all, the, the, the response has been fantastic wherever I've gone. And secondly, it's been the same wherever I've gone. Mm. You see, when, when people are opening their minds and opening their senses to um, consciousness beyond it, to consciousness beyond the program at levels of, of, if you like, frequency that are not within the program's band, um, then they're tapping in to the same consciousness. Yeah. It's Therefore, not about words or language. To respond the same, because when when you tap into that consciousness beyond the program, you are no longer Australian, or British, or French, or Muslim, or Jewish. You see through that illusion when you get to that level of awareness. Um, and and what I'm I'm finding because you know, one of the things I, I mean the the talk has moved on so much since I started out in the last, last summer on the Isle of Wight and in London, because, you know, 
there is there is not just an awakening going on that there is there is a a bursting of the bubble going on and those that are willing to open their minds to it um are are are, are getting flooded with information and concepts and perceptions that are deeper and deeper and deeper than ever ever before so if my talk hasn't moved on um, uh, from what it is now, by the time I get to Dublin in three weeks, then I'm going to be disappointed. But it will have done because this is what what happened. It's a constant, constant opening and opening and opening. And and, and what, what I'm seeing um, wherever I go is this same awareness, this same response um, to this information and also to the the energetic field that builds up in these event venues over the period of a day when you're dealing with this kind of information mm. because you know it's not just about oh how, how things are, are terrible it's 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 about why are they terrible um uh what's behind it um uh, what does it need to um to stay in place and 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 how can we um, uh, do something about it. It's, 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 it's very, very positive. But to, to, to get positive, going back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, you have to go beyond the world of the five senses. Then, then you see, A, where all this is ultimately coming from, and also, therefore, where you stop it coming. Uh, how, how you stop it coming? Exactly. Uh, and, and and flooding this world with all this uh, this um, upheaval and chaos uh, and uh, distortion. Uh, and, and so it's been very uh, and uh, also interesting, uh, John, is that when I started out last summer, it was the first time apart from two London talks that I had actually um, uh, done a public presentation like that since 2011. Um, and 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 so I, I had five uh, five years passed um, for me to clearly see the difference uh, from from before, and it is different, and 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 it's gathering in intensity. Uh, people are able now to open their minds to the possibilities of things deep deep in the rabbit hole that that they never would have before, and and you know I. Because I travel, or because I, I talk to these audiences of, of so many different kinds, I can see it. It is happening. I can understand people living in a, and, and working in a certain area and interacting with the same people every day that might not see it. Mm. But but I, it, there there is a global awakening going on. And, and remember, I was on the road uh, 25 years ago, um, talking to next to nobody. Yes, but still talking to people and seeing the reaction. And, and and there is a fantastic change going on. There really is. And 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 in the public arena, this this whole Brexit illusion of Trump um, response uh, is a is an expression of that. Not not of, of a, some fantastic awakening, but it's just it's just a sign that hey, you know, this is starting to seep in now. It's starting to affect the way people see the world. And do you think then the establishment response to the likes of Brexit and Trump and other various bits and pieces that have gone on over the last 12 months has been indicative of any kind of panic on their part? Do you think that they are oblivious to what's going on? Do they think maybe it's a blip in their grand master plan? And how do you think they will react if it is something that they notice and aren't arrogant enough to ignore? Well, I, I do. I do. Th I do think they're, they're, they are uh, concerned. Absolutely. Because uh, and this is this is where this um, big um, out of nowhere um, fake news hoax comes from uh, and, and using it as an excuse to uh, uh, buy by people like um, uh, Facebook, um, you know, the, the T-shirt that doesn't run Facebook uh, to um, to <laughs> censor um, alternative information and to 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 give fact checking control to some of the worst fake news operations in the world, including the Washington Post. Um, uh, so this, you see, when you're dealing with a perception deception, uh, if you're going to control people's perceptions so that they um, suit you because of what people will therefore then accept, what they won't accept, what they will do and what they won't do, uh, uh, etc., you have to control the information they receive. Because that's where perceptions come from. 
you know, you can have information in the form of a personal experience or you could have information as someone reading something on the news. It's all information through which we uh, construct our perceptions. And what the alternative media has done um, over the years is to put before people like never before information that says you can look at the world in another way as well, you know, not just what um, uh, uh, the BBC tells you or the government tells you. There's another way of looking at it. And, and, and because this information is so powerful, it's had a powerful effect. Uh, and, 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 you know, I'm contacted all the time by people and, and people I meet in the street and stuff who say, I can't believe it. You know, people I'd never thought would open their minds to anything. And now um, hearing a new story and saying, well, I, I, I bet it's that, you know, I, think, I can't believe it. You're saying that. Whoa. Uh, so it has had this effect and, it, and they are concerned about it. You know, they wouldn't be um, trying to um, uh, shut out the alternative media. Um, in the way that they currently are, um, because they um, they think it's a bit of fun. They're doing it because they think it's necessary. Mm. So that's a sign in itself that they are concerned. And see, there's two things that have brought this about because it's a psychological game. One is control of information, and two is um, the uh, the fact that um, people uh, will uh, not question that information. You put those two together and you, you get the information equaling the perceptions of the people. What the alternative media has done is, is to show that there are other ways of looking at the world and that, that there is a need to question what we, are, what we were told before because it's not necessarily the truth. Uh, and, and so, you know, they are um, uh, realizing that um, the world for them is not like it was before. They can't get away with what they uh, could before in the numbers that they could before. Uh, so uh, so I, it's, it's, it, it's good stuff. I mean, you know, I, I take it as a compliment when people try to suppress it because they only suppress it because they're frightened of it.